The string butler. Does it work and do you need one? If you're not familiar with the string butler, this is how they advertise it. They show that on many guitars which have got three tuners on either side, the break angle at the nut can be quite sharp. And this can cause the strings to stick, which in turn causes tuning issues. And of course this can be true. If you then look at the second image, you'll notice that the string butler has actually caused the strings to go straight through the nut. However, if you look more closely, you'll notice that the string butler has actually created a greater break angle. It's just moved the break angle further up the guitar's headstock. So, let's find out if the string butler actually works or if it's just a waste of money. Firstly then, we'll unpackage the string butler so we can take a look at it. I ordered this one from Germany because most of the websites that supply these seem to be based in Germany. And it came in a simple jiffy bag, which is all it needs, but they did send it special delivery. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And in the jiffy bag is an invoice, a business card, and the string butler itself has been sellotaped inside a piece of card, so I'll just get it out of there. I've put the business card on the screen of the company I bought the string butler from. And that's because I always get asked in the comments uh, where I buy these things. So if you're interested, that's the company. I paid a good price for it and the postage was fairly quick and that's all I know. And once you've removed the cardboard protection, you can see the string butlers in a plastic bag. And inside the plastic bag with the string butler are a couple of plastic washers. So you can take a better look at it, I've taken some still pictures and you can see it's really well made and the posts with the rollers on seem strong and it's machined down either side where it mounts to the guitar so it doesn't take up all the thread from the nut that attaches to the machine head. The design seems very well thought out as well as executed with a level of simplicity that means it shouldn't really go wrong. And the rollers seem to work very well and they can move up and down the post because obviously your strings don't stay at the same level. It depends how you wind them onto the machine heads. I bought the gold version because I thought it better suited the guitar I'm going to put it on. But you can get a silver one, a black one and a transparent acrylic one. I think if the string butler is going to work at all, these rollers have to move really easily. So here it is, I've turned it upside down and you can see here those rollers are machined very well and they do rotate very easily. If you're seeing any imperfections in the metal and in the lathe work, remember you're looking at this in extreme close-up. The next thing we need to do then is to actually put it on a guitar. And the guitar I'm going to put it on is a Shine semi-acoustic. I've had this guitar for about 20 years and it's always had a tuning issue. You can see on the other end of the guitar I put a rolling bridge on which did improve the tuning but hopefully this will solve the tuning problem for good. Before starting the job I've just rested the string butler on the guitar to make sure it's going to fit correctly and it looks like it's going to be the perfect fit. Here it's worth me pointing out that there's several versions of the string butler and it's worth you looking into that before you buy the one for your guitar as they all cover different gaps between the posts. And looking into it, I thought version 2 best suited my guitar. Right, I've established the string butler's going to fit over the string posts, so I'll remove the strings now. And I'll speed this bit up so it's not so boring. In the ideal world, I'd like to take off as few strings as I possibly can. However, I think I'm going to have to take off four strings at least, because I've got to take off the top E string and the bottom E string so I can take the nut off. And the A and the D string will have to come off so I can get the string butler into place. Unfortunately, this string winder isn't a perfect fit for the machine heads, but it's a lot quicker than trying to do it with my fingers.
I had a look to see if I could put it on without taking the D string off then, but without success. Once the strings have been removed, we can remove the nut that holds on the top E string tuner and the bottom E string tuner, so I'll just do that. I think most people use a small spanner to do this job, but I use a 10mm socket adapted onto a screwdriver. And I use this because I find it more secure and I feel I'm less likely to scratch the guitar. Remember when you take off the nuts and the washers to put them somewhere safe. Before I put anything back in place I'm going to clean up the surface of the guitar. Over the years a lot of grime has gathered underneath the washers and I don't want this to be left in place underneath the string butler. You'll notice I'm using a paintbrush. I find a paintbrush really handy to get into all the little grooves and nicks on a guitar to clean out the dust. It doesn't have to be perfect, but once you've got most of the muck and grime off, we can start putting the string butler into place. And the first thing we need to do is put the plastic washers over the tuners. And then you can slide on the string butler. Now, you need to make sure it's central on the guitar. And it's worked out quite well on this guitar because it's an exact fit, so there's not much play at all, so it's really easy to centralise it. The next thing we need to do is put the original washers on that were on the guitar, and then we put the nut into place that's going to hold it all down. You'll notice I put the washers and nuts in place and screw them down until they're approximately finger tight. And this is so I can still move the string butler underneath the nuts. This way I can position it exactly central as it should be and then tighten it up all the way to make sure it doesn't move. However, it's still important it's central otherwise the string will still be passing over the nut at an angle. Once the string butler's in place and the two nuts are tightened up, we can put the strings back on. However, before I do that, I'll just brush off the headstock again because it's easier to clean it without the strings being in the way. I'll speed this section up again. After watching this, I'm sure you'll agree, it's a really easy job and it goes on really well. And there's not a great deal that could go wrong. However, I always recommend if you're taking off strings and putting them back on again, have a spare set lying around. But really, you should have a spare set lying around anyway. I'm going to tune the guitar up now and let it settle down before I do any tests because it would be unfair to the string butler if I started testing it straight after putting the strings back on. You'll notice I've rooted the strings on the inside of the rollers so they're closer to the centre and this is important if you want the string butler to work correctly. Before doing any tests, I want to just draw your attention to some observations I made after I'd put the string butler on. You might remember at the beginning I mentioned the fact that before the string butler, the break angle of the string was actually less than with the string butler. And I can now confirm this because if we take a look at the D string before the string butler's fitted, the break angle at the nut is about 7% and we can confirm this with a protractor. Now if we take a look at the brake angle after the string butler is fitted it's about 15% at the roller which is twice the angle it was previously. So the brake angle is obviously a lot higher when the string butler is fitted so we just need to find out if the string can pass around that roller smoothly to see if it'll improve the tuning situation on this guitar. 
So the first test I'll do will be to see if the rollers will roll freely even with the pressure of the strings acting on them. And to do this I'll detune the guitar and retune it a couple of times whilst watching the rollers in extreme close up. And hopefully you can already see that the A string is moving if you look very closely. And now I'll just try the same thing with the D string and we'll try and see if we can see the D string roller rolling. And I think they're pretty clear it's obviously working. Let's do that again but this time I'm going to mark the A string and the D string with a felt tip so you can see just how much movement the string does against the roller. This seemed a lot easier in my head than it is in practice. Uh, what you can't see is the camera's right on top of the guitar and two lights so I'm trying to squeeze the felt tip in between a light and the camera so I can mark the string off. But I've managed it. Hopefully now you can not only see the rollers rolling but you can also see just how far the strings travel across the rollers. And this kind of emphasises just how important the rollers are and it also shows you just how much movement happens across the nut of the guitar when you're tuning it up, especially if it's gone right out of tune or if you drop tune the guitar. I'm sure you'll agree that was a really successful test and it really surprised me just how effective those rollers are. Right, the next test I'm going to try is probably the most important and I'm going to test if the string butler has actually corrected the problem I was having with the guitar and that is that it wouldn't tune smoothly, you'd always overshoot where you wanted to be. And to do this I'll just play around with the tuning basically and what I really want to know is how responsive the tuning is to movements in the machine heads and is it still sticking. So I don't get external noise interfering with the microphone on the tuner I've plugged an external tuner into the guitar. Hopefully this way I'll get a more accurate reading and also it'll be easier for the camera to see. Straight away I can say that the tuning is really responsive to any movement in the machine heads. It's really improved the way this guitar tunes up. Hopefully you can see just how responsive this guitar is now. Any slight movements in the machine head reflects in the tuning. In fact, better than most of my other guitars I think. It really has made a difference. So, regarding the first question I posed at the beginning of this video, the string butler definitely works and it's definitely not a waste of money. However, if you're thinking of going out and buying one of these, I've got three warnings and the first one is if you've got cheap machine heads or a slipping machine head or tuner then having a string butler could cause you major problems because if you've got cheap machine heads or slipping ones the friction at the nut could be helping to hold your guitar in tune and getting rid of that friction could cause you major problems. The second warning is Make sure you haven't got an angled nut. If you've got an angled nut, you'll just be creating extra friction because you'll have a double break point on the strings. However, these aren't very common and the chances are if you've got one on your guitar, you know about it unless it's second hand and somebody's modified it. So check that first before you try to fit a string butler on it. The third warning is 
Make sure you don't have pushing bushes around the tuning posts. And to recognize this, if you look at your tuning posts, they should have a nut around them. However, if you've got pushing bushes, it'll just look like a washer. And if you've got one of these, you'll have to get a modification in order to fit the string butler. And this is obviously because if you haven't got a nut there, you've got no way of holding it in place. And a bush won't hold it in place. Even though I've given you these warnings, it's easy enough to sort the three problems out and you can fit the string buckler. However, I just wanted you to be aware of these potential problems. Another thing I can see is people fitting it anyway if they haven't got a problem with the guitar. I don't know if I'd do that, but there's nothing wrong with that. If you like the look of the string buckler, it's quite an interesting look to the top of your guitar. Saying that, I'm not over keen with the way the string butler's tabs, where the slots are, goes beyond the machine head and even over the binding. I think this looks pretty scruffy. And the next time I change strings on this guitar, I'll probably take the string butler off and grind it down and then put it back on again so it looks more neat. However, they do have to make it to fit as many guitars as possible, so I know why they've done that. But I still think it looks scruffy. So I will modify that the next time I change the strings. I hope you found this video enlightening or interesting or you've learned something new. And if you have, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and if you're interested in guitar lessons, completely free of charge online, look at www.ebooksforguitar.com and you'll find lots of free guitar lessons there. Otherwise, there's lots of guitar courses on my YouTube channel, which are in the playlist section.